So hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about six tips for a successful USA visa interview. Basically, we're going to talk about six things that you really need to know or really have to have a good response for or, or and evidence for when asked this in the interview or if you are asked this in the interview. Alright, so let's get to it. So the first thing you must have a very good response for if asked to uh, respond to this in the interview for your visa is uh, your ties to your country of origin, right? And it's very, very important to have ties to your country of origin, significant ties, right? Under United States law, non-immigrants are considered intending immigrants until they can convince the consular officer that they are not right so you must be able to show that you have significant ties to your country of origin you must show them and you must be able to prove to them there's a lot more reasons for you to return to your country of origin than reasons to stay in the United States. If you cannot prove this, you'll be denied your visa. Right? So ways to prove this is you should, if it means that you might have businesses in your country of origin, right? You might have businesses, you might have real estate, you might have a stable job in your country of origin, you might be going to school in your country of origin. The more of these things you can have, right? If you have, uh, you know, the more things you can have that would prove that you would have significant ties to your country of origin, the better your chances of getting a visa to the United States for travel, right? And we're talking about the non-immigrant visas, the ones that you use for vacation, right? The ones you use for just uh, for pleasure, right? That kind. So you have to show that you have significant ties to your country of origin. If you have no ties, if you have no, you're not going to school in a country of origin, you're not working, or you might be working jobs that are odd jobs. You don't have land, you don't have family, right? Um, you don't have businesses it's going to reduce your chances of getting that visa, right? So before you even think of applying for a US visa, make sure you have this part taken care of. Make sure you have a job, or if you're going to school, make sure you have that, you're going to school consistently, right? Uh, make sure you, you, um, you might have some real estate or you have some property or something, you know, some sort of asset, you have family members, right? And even if you have all those things, you still have to show that there is no possibility of you going to USA and staying there and hiding out. Right? So that's the first one. Show that you have significant ties to a country of origin. So the second thing is you have to... Uh, prove that you have sufficient funds you have available sufficient funds to support your stay in USA while you're there right and this is many times comes up uh, as a big red flag to the consular officer when they analyze this and realize that you don't have sufficient funds to support your stay and they ask you how are you going to support your stay in USA while you're here? So many times it gives them an indication. If you don't have sufficient funds, it gives them an indication that you're really trying to escape your country of origin to stay over in the United States to work, right? So one major thing you need to have sorted out, you have to have sufficient funds available 
to support your stay in the United States while you're there. If you cannot show that, if you cannot show that you have sufficient money in your bank accounts, right? Or you don't have somebody that might be, well, it shouldn't get to the point that you have somebody, uh, you are dependent of somebody because that's a big red flag. You should have sufficient funds in your account to support your stay. And it should have a sense, they should get the idea that you're really going to visit the United States and come back. So, you need to have sufficient funds to support your stay. They are going to look for this. So another thing is, where are you going to stay when you arrive in the USA? And if asked this question in the interview, you have to have a solid response. If you don't have a solid response to this, it's going to harm your chances of getting a visa. They expect that there is some arrangements for you to stay in the USA. Right? So you need to have an answer for that and you need to have the address that you're going to stay. Otherwise, you're going to be denied your visa. So persons that are visiting family members, if you say you're going, to re you're going to visit family members, it is expected that you are going to be, be staying at a family member's uh, residence. And you should be able to give the address of that family member. And this could be used for verification purposes. They could verify by calling that person if you really are going to stay by them. Right? So if you don't have that kind of arrangement where you give any address or number and they call and the respondent says they do not know you, it is going to be harming your ability to get that visa. If you're going on a conference and you're not staying by family members, then it's expected that you might be able to identify a hotel that you are going to be staying. And you should have paperwork showing your reservation at that hotel. Right? So even if you're going on a conference and you do not have a reservation for a hotel, it, it could harm your possibility of getting a visa. Right? So that's a very important thing that you need to keep in mind where are you going to stay? You have to get that organized before you go for that visa interview. Otherwise, you're going to be denied your visa. Another one is your reason for travel. Your reason for travel. Right? Now, this may be stated in your initial application, but they may ask you again in the interview, what is your reason for travel to the United States? And first thing first, it should not contradict what you said in your application, right? Now, I always say be honest at all times. Be honest. Do not be dishonest with your responses. It must be genuine, right? So everything I'm saying here is with honesty in mind. So if you said you're going for vacation, then I expect you're going to be repeating that in your interview and everything every documentation you have should suggest that your reason is for vacation All right and the visa you're applying for should be if it's for vacation it should be for one of those visas that will allow you to enter for vacation or leisure purposes if your reason is for school you should first of all be applying for a student visa and you should be able to show without doubt that you are coming here for school and you are going to leave after. There should not be indication by if it's a, a student visa that you are coming here to work and you're coming to stay over after school. It may cause, it may hamper your ability to get the visa. So you need to know your reason for travel and you need to be able to prove without a doubt that it's not going to result in you overstaying your time or you're not going to be coming here for the reasons other than so documentation and everything should suggest that you're not coming here for reasons other than what you're applying for that visa for All right so that's very important another thing is if you have dependents what happens to them right 
what happens to your dependents who are remaining back home right and this is very very important if you have dependents and even if it's a lot of dependents you have the consulate officer should not get the impression that the dependents are expecting you to remit money from the United States back home to support themselves, right? And the implications of that is it may, if you're going on vacation, it may, if they get the impression that you're going there to work to send back money, it's going to harm your ability to get that visa. And even worse, if you're applying for a student visa, right? If you're applying for a student visa and it appears to them that your dependents are expecting you to remit money from the United States back to your country, country of origin to support themselves, or even if you are coming to the United States to set the stage for your dependents to come over to the United States to stay and live with you eventually, it's going to hamper your ability to get your visa. Right? So it must be very clear that you are coming here for vacation or school and you are going to return back here to your country of origin after a program or after a stay. It should not ever look like you are going to do something or your, com your reasons for coming to the United States is different from what the reasons you are applying for that visa. So another one is, if they were to ask you, do you have a criminal record or were you ever convicted of a crime? And you should be very, very honest, right? No, just because you have a criminal record or you committed a crime, it doesn't automatically disqualify you for the visa. Yes, it's going to make it a little more complicated, but it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't automatically disqualify you, right? right it's going to just make it a little more complicated you may or you may not get the visa but it doesn't says automatically no what will cause you problems is if you have a criminal record uh you have a, you have been convicted of a crime and you come into the visa offer in uh, the officer in the interview and you say otherwise, you be dishonest where this question is concerned. They ask you if you have a criminal record, if you ever been convicted of a crime, and you tell them, and you were convicted of a crime, but you told them, no, you were not. They are going to find out. And when they find out, it's going to be even more complicated for you get to get the visa now and in the future. Right? That's for being dishonest. So never be dishonest to the consulate officer, they ask you things about criminal record, committing crimes. If you have committed crimes, you have a criminal record, you should say yes and let them decide from the application whether they should go forward and afford you the visa or whether they should, you know, they should um, deny you that visa. But do not lie because it's just going to make things harder for you. So overall, these are six major things that you need, six tips you need to consider and have uh, taken care of before your visa interview. You should take these six tips, look at them and see if you have satisfied them sufficiently. So if you were asked by the consulate officer questions connected to these six tips if you have a very good response a favorable response for these six tips if you do it's gonna be you know a lot better your chances are gonna be a lot better for getting that visa but if you don't in many or one or two or a few or even all of these you do not have it covered you don't have favorable responses it's going to be a little complicated for you to get that visa and you should go back to the drawing board and make sure you satisfy them before going forward to get that visa interview. There are a lot more tips 
I will cover them the rest in another uh, session but for now these six tips are very good starter tips very important core tips to consider when going for your visa interview and it can lead to success in getting your visa until then I'll see you on the next episode I hope this was very beneficial to you all and work hard to get that visa.